Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at the integrated rate law, which is typically introduced in the kinetics section of general chemistry. So now there is also the differential rate law, and we do have a video on that, but in this one I'd like to mostly focus on some of the general aspects of the integrated rate law. So first of all, the integrated rate law is going to compare how the concentration changes over time. Now typically we're going to be looking at the concentration of one reactant and how that one reactant changes over time. The order of the reaction will have bearing on what the integrated rate law looks like, but why don't we go ahead and take a look at the general format. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that general format of the integrated rate law. So now that format is going to be in the equation of a line. So we're just going to go over the general pieces and then we'll take a look at how the order of reaction will affect the way this overall reaction looks. So Y is going to relate to the concentration of the reactant of interest at a particular time point. So let's say you want to figure out what is the concentration of my reactant after 10 seconds has elapsed. You would then go ahead and plug in for X 10 seconds. So X here is representative of time and then you'd be able to figure out what the actual concentration is based on the value of Y. Now the slope M is going to be equal to the rate constant K. Now that's sometimes very useful to know because what they'll do is they'll show you what the overall line equation is for the integrated rate law and then you'd need to know that the K value, the rate constant, was equal to the slope and then you can solve problems further. Then over here, B is going to be related to the initial concentration that you have at the very start of the reaction. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the rate of the reaction is affected by the order of the reaction. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how the order of a reaction can affect the format of the integrated rate law. So if we take a look over here, we know we have a zero order integrated rate law if we're plotting the concentration as it is, not manipulating it in any way, relative to time. And you'll notice it here we have a negative slope. So in this case, if you were to take the concentration of your reactant as it changes over time and plot it, you'd get a straight line if it was zero order when you have just the concentration in relation to time. On the other hand, if you have a first order reaction, you'd be plotting the natural log of the concentration over time and that would yield a straight line. And that's an indication that you have a first order reaction. So this here is going to be our natural log and it's also having a negative slope. Lastly, you could have a second order rate law. And in that case here, you've got one over concentration versus time yielding a straight line. And that's going to be indicative of having a second order rate law. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that this here has a positive slope. So it's another way to kind of verify what kind of order of rate law you have. So those are some of the things you want to know when you're dealing with the integrated rate law.